state red meat. Patrick Newport is with us. He's chief economist for IH Global Insight. He's kind of bullish. Same goes for David Burson, chief economist at PMI Group. Danny Babb is realtor and owner of the Babb Group. Kind of neither bull nor bear, but has some great advice for those looking to get into this market. And Dan North, chief economist with Euler Hermes, is bullish. Spencer Raskoff is chief financial officer at Zillow. More bearish than bullish. And our bearish, most bearish guest of all, my pal J.T. Smith, Executive Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Aristar. Dan North, you're the most bullish or one of the most. So I'm gonna, I'd like to start with you. First of all, do you think the housing crisis is over? Is the worst finally behind us? Oh, I think the worst is behind us. Yeah, there's so much data that uh, looks uh, very bottomish that uh, I think we're really on the way up. Now, people always argue with me about, um, you know, just because it's uh, not as bad as it was, does that mean it's better? Well, everybody knows the data is bad. Everybody knows the, the market, uh, housing market is bad, but it is, it is getting better, and that's the positive here. I'll take I, it. Well, J.T. Uh, Smith, go ahead. Pop our bubble, babe. Well, I, I don't know what, what numbers these guys are looking at, but we need to look at the methodology that some of these uh, people are using, whether it's Case-Shiller or the U.S. Census. Um, you know, the Case-Shiller that you were uh, referring to earlier in the program. Sure. Up half it, a percent from April to May. Yeah, I mean, the price. It, it, Listen, um, the, the methodology that they use is as one family only. Um, it, it, Single it also, family homes. But rather than talk about methodology, which is boring stuff, <laughs> let's zoom out to the big picture here, JT, and just tell me, does it get better or worse from here? And oh, why? It's, it, it's getting worse. Why? It, it's getting worse because foreclosures are now hitting the prime A borrowers. All right. Yeah, but foreclosures, one study shows, the reason foreclosures are up in prime eight borrowers, it's not subprime stuff, but it's places where people had no money down. And once those loans that have no, no money down, those people walk away, maybe we're going to get a little better off. Uh, that's, Mr. That's Newport, why don't you come in Dennis, for us? Dennis, you know that's incorrect. And you know it's incorrect because four months ago, I told you that the job loss and the unemployment situation, when it was below 8%, was going to cause the prime borrowers that we were already seeing anecdotal evidence that the prime borrowers are going to go bad. I can mitigate, I can modify interest rate. Right. I cannot mitigate no income. Okay, but the fact it's is, it, uh, overall it's getting better. Go ahead, take it, Patrick Newport, if you would. You, you can't argue with the numbers. Sales are up, housing starts are up, and housing prices are, start, are starting to drop. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that even though the numbers are coming out very good, the housing market is two markets. It's a market for single-family homes, that's the market that's starting to grow. But it's also the market for, for rental units. That's about a third of the market. And that market has never been as bad as it is now. Rental vacancy rates are at right. all-time highs. And housing starts are at all-time right. Best of times and least, least worst of times. Oh, okay. Let's ask Danny Babb. What are you seeing yeah. from your eye-level view? I think that JT is absolutely spot on, and there are bunches of reasons here. First of all, we have about one in four homeowners that are in the jumbo market that own more that, that owe more on their home than their house is worth. Those people are going to be in foreclosure in the next couple of years. That's going to hit this market. It's going to create downward pressure on prices. We also have a problem in the in the the uh, the FHA qualified mortgages, where uh, the spring buying season is affecting these numbers, and we don't even know if these homes are actually going to be able to close escrow because the banks are creating obstacles for people to act. Actually buy. That's a really big problem, and it's distorting right. the numbers. And also, the 20 metro areas, give me a break, 20 metro areas is not. I have a degree in statistics, and I'd love to have market euphoria here, but my, my unfortunately, but my knowledge what, is uh, overriding my But there's for another that. guest coming on later in the show. He's got a 55 market survey that shows prices actually going up five months in a row from month to month. Uh, Spencer Raskoff, uh, everyone's worried about foreclosures exploding, but with every foreclosure, isn't there a new buyer that comes in and gets a pretty good value at a pretty cheap price? Well, the problem here is you have to separate transaction velocity from sale prices. So velocity is up. Homes are selling, and that wasn't the case six months ago, but they're selling at very distressed prices. A quarter of all sales in May, according to Zillow's data, were sold as part of a foreclosure. Forty percent of the homes that sold in San Diego and L.A. were foreclosure sales, 60 percent in San Diego, 70 percent in Las Vegas. So it's the low end of the market, and it's foreclosure and distressed sales that are happening. This is not a healthy housing market, and I definitely don't okay. think we're at the bottom. On the other hand, inventory yeah. of unsold homes on the market down to 8.8 from 10.2 months. I think it's a positive side. I'm sorry. Sorry we didn't get more of you in from each of you. There's so many of you. I'm sorry, but we got to wrap right now. And next up, thanks for being with us, guys.